Hello and welcome to First Law Television. Um, this set of videos is going to help explain to you the tools and some of the supplies that you're going to need in order to participate in First. So a great question to ask for a first time team is, what is the basic tool set that I need? I have a couple of recommendations that I like to make to almost all of the teams is, go to Costco. Find out what the tool set of the day is. It'll usually come in a plastic box like this and will um, allow you to keep your tools organized and collected in one simple spot. Uh, uh, you want the toolbox that looks like the tools are appropriate for working on, say, a car. Um, so wrenches and sockets and stuff. Here's an example of one of such set. Um, it's, I happened to get this one at Home Depot a couple years ago. You can see it has uh, sockets, wrenches, um, deep sockets, um, both metric and SEA, or, or the English units. Um, everything is stored in, in a, and has a place, which is great because at the end of the day you can tell whether you've put your tools away or whether you're missing anything. Now the other nice thing about a box like this is it's easily stored. You can put it away in a cabinet somewhere. Um, it's also very portable so that when you go to a scrimmage event or when you actually go to the main event, um, you're able to carry a nice set of tools in a small container. One of the most critical tools that you're going to need is a good power drill. Um, this is a cordless rigid power drill. I would go with anything that is 14 volts, 18 volts, somewhere in there. Get something that's sturdy, that's a brand name that you've heard of before. Don't chimp out on this. You're going to use this tool a lot. You're going to want to get a, mach a machine that can replace the battery. I would definitely get at least two batteries and a charger. Um, a half inch drill chuck is pretty important. Um, so you're going to want to get a big one. This is going to cost you a couple hundred bucks easily to get set up with a good drill. But it's, it's a critical part of your toolkit and something you'll be using a lot. Um, now, in addition to a good cordless drill, I also re recommend getting a reasonable uh, corded drill. There are times when the, these are going to run out of power. Um, spending the 20 bucks to get a corded drill uh, helps a lot sometimes, especially if you have to drill a lot of holes. Um, it does occasionally happen that you'll need to reduce the weight of your robot, and you can run these batteries down pretty quick doing that. Another nice feature of these newer drills is I, I would recommend getting a keyless chuck. And um, most of the modern drills have that these days, but if you get too inexpensive, you'll still end up with one with a key. And those are typically kind of a pain in the butt to work with. Another thing that you'll need to go along with your drills, uh, with your drill motors, are drill bits. And uh, I usually suggest just getting one of these uh, drill indexes. It has most of the sizes that you're going to need. And again, it it, having them in a nice box will help out. Um, this one goes from a sixteenth of an inch up to a half an inch, um, and it's stepped in, uh, looks like 60 fourths. So that's a pretty decent set of drills. I think this is probably 20, 30 bucks. You uh, uh, don't, don't cheap out too far on your drill bits. They, uh, the really cheap drill bits don't last very long. You'll also want to get a couple of extras of the following sizes. You're going to want a couple of extra 1 8 inch bits. Students have a habit of breaking those. You'll also probably want to have at least one extra 1 quarter inch drill bit because that will, is the one that will get used the most and it's probably the one that is either likely to get broken or dulled very quickly. So I'd recommend just going to the loose uh, drill bit wall at Home Depot and getting uh, a couple of those. Okay, now in addition to this uh, tool set that I got at Home Depot, I also have another toolbox here that handles all of the random stuff. There's just a bunch of little bizarre tools that you'll need. So I, I also recommend getting a, a second toolbox. You don't want something too big because you're going to have to carry it in and out of the venues. You'll also want to be carrying it to the preseason event and any of the workshops that you'll need. Um, I think a great way for you to see what sort of tools are involved is we'll just take a little tour of this toolbox. I've been using this toolbox for almost eight years and it's full of a whole bunch of bizarre stuff. Um, I, like, I like the toolbox that has the drawers in the front. It allows me to at least try and keep it organized. 
it doesn't work very well, but that's okay. Um, on the bottom, I have a, some electrical things. Um, I've got some mechanical things, a chain breaker and such. And um, one of the drawers, I've got all of the measuring equipment. And the top, I just have random hand tools. Um, let's go through a few of these and, and you'll see what's useful and, and what isn't. So one of the most common tasks that you're gonna do while working on your robot is, is doing some wiring. And it oftentimes involves putting a, uh, a connector, such as this ring connector, on the end of a piece of wire. Um, and here, for example, is, is one of the connectors and I need to put it on the end of this wire. Now, most of us kind of grew up using uh, one of these kind of cheap pairs of crimping tools. Um, these stink. Throw them away. You really don't want these. What you want to do is you want to spend some money um, and get a very, very good crimping tool. And I've got two examples here. Um, one of them is this style. It is a, uh, it's a, it's a tool designed for only for crimping, um, and it has a ratchet action. These give you an excellent connection. They're a little expensive. They cost up to about $50. This is the, probably the best $50 you're going to spend this season. Uh, another potential, if, if you don't want to go that route, um, are these Klein tools, K-L-E-I-N. Um, uh, and um, these are very, very nice crimpers as well. They do a much better job than these crappy ones. So if you've got a pair of these, just throw them away. So we'll just strip a little bit of this wire off. Off it goes. And I'm going to put this terminal on here. And I'll just show you the, the, the way these work. Is you stick it in there. And as you crimp, you're really putting the pressure on this thing. And um, the nice thing is that these ratchets, so if you were unable to squeeze it all the way, um, you can, it, it won't free up. And you can really squeeze it. There we go. There, now, this gave a really good connection as opposed to those crappy ones. Best 50 bucks you're ever going to spend. Another important tool that you'll end up needing is a multimeter. This is an electronic device that will measure both voltage, resistance, and continuity. It does a whole bunch of other measurements, but for the most part, we don't really use them. You're really, you're really trying to measure whether the battery is good or whether there's electricity in a certain part. There are Lots of these available. Some of them cost several thousand dollars. I'd highly recommend something that costs between 20 and 40 dollars. Don't spend much more than that because you're kind of in the overkill range at that point, unless you really know what it is that you're shopping for. Uh, got this one at Home Depot. I think it was uh, about 25 dollars. Radio Shack has a fairly nice selection of them for right around 25 dollars as well. Very useful tool. You shouldn't. Your toolbox should not be without one of these. So this is a chain breaker, and this is a tool that you're not likely to already have, so you're probably going to have to buy one. They're available from McMaster and Carr, or they're also available from MSC Direct, and there are links to those um, in the show notes. This tool is used to shorten or, or, or disconnect the links of this bicycle chain. So this chain breaker is used by um, placing this the, the pin over the... Um, the screw and then you tighten down on this and it'll push the pin out of the chain and it'll cause it to break. This is a must have for almost every team. We use chain a lot in the drive system. Um, so other items in my toolbox are, I have a set of, of Allen wrenches here. These are hex wrenches. They come in two basic flavors. They come in these nice long ones and they, they come with this carrying case mechanism and you get these nice long Allen wrenches. The problem is is that inevitably they get lost and inevitably they get lost when you really need one. I recommend getting one of these anyway because a lot of times you need to reach in places where you otherwise can't. Um, if you do opt to go with one of these long sets, I highly recommend you get an integrated set as well. Um, these are all actually attached to this whole unit. So that's usually what I do is I end up with one of each of these things. You're looking at like 10 bucks in, 10 bucks. So you got about 20 bucks worth of hex wrenches here. 
but they're um, critical for most of the components on your first robot, so you're going to need these. Also in my toolbox, I have a set of uh, C-clamps. These are used to uh, uh, hold things in place while you're assembling things. They're very useful. I've got, oh, about six or eight of them in here of various sizes. This is a three-inch. I'd, I'd get a one-inch, a two-inch, and a three-inch, a pair of each, and that should suffice for you. My top drawer here is full of measuring devices and marking devices. Um, things like tape measures, you'll, you'll have quite a few people on your team working on various things. You'll probably need four or five tape measures. Um, these are dial calipers, and I actually have several different ones in here that I want to show you real quick. Dial caliper is, is used for several different forms of measurement. For example, here's a round bar, and I can measure its diameter using this gadget. And it's uh, 0.625, so 5 eighths of an inch. Um, they come in various grades and various sizes. Um, usually a, a 6 inch one is fine. You really don't need any bigger than that. Um, they come in, this, this is a plastic one I got at Home Depot. I think it cost $18. I mean, it works fine for, for what it is. You can also get metal ones. I got this one from Grizzly. Um, it's accurate to a thousandth of an inch. Uh, sometimes you actually do need to be able to read things down to a thousandth of an inch. So if you don't have anything, check out Grizzly at grizzly.com and, and see about getting one of these. I, I seem to recall this was somewhere around 20 bucks. Um, I do this a lot, so I also have a digital caliper. Um, this gives a digital readout, which is uh, fairly convenient. You can also have it select between metric and English units. I'll be honest, this is how I do English to metric conversions. I figure out what the measurement is and hit the button. I'm lazy. Um, if, if you don't have anything, I would tr try and get a metal one. The metal ones seem to last longer. Um, th this, this gadget can be used to measure inside or, or uh, outside diameters. Um, I can also measure the insides using the, the top, so I can measure the inside diameter of a circle. And it also has a depth gauge. As you can see, as this comes out, there's a depth gauge that comes out the bottom, and it'll measure the distance from, from the underside here down to here. So it, it does three measurements. It's, they're very useful, very handy to have. Other things I have for measuring, I've got a flat rule. These are fairly cheap. You can usually get them as promotional items. Uh, I would recommend having one that's maybe four or five inches. It makes laying out things really nice. And this is a scratch awl. It looks like, a, uh, it looks like an ice pick. Um, it's, it's usually got a very fine tip on it, and you use this to mark metal, putting a little scratch. It works more accurately than a pencil. You get a very fine... Uh, line mark for you to use. Of course, I got an assortment of files. Um, these you, you end up filing a lot on first robots. We were pretty uh, anal retentive about making sure that the sharp edges are removed from your robot. So files are a necessity. Um, on the top here, I've got a rubber mallet, hacksaw. Get four or five of these. Uh, students tend to misplace them very quickly. Uh, I also have a set of extra blades in here. And you can see right here on the package, it's marked 24 teeth by 12 inches. Um, 24 tooth is, is good general purpose metal hacksaw. You don't want to go too much smaller than that. Let's see what else do we have in here. Uh, again, I have all of these different size clamps like I was talking about earlier. A uh, bunch of random screwdrivers. I think the, the only last thing that in here that you may not have is this. This is a machinist square. It's a, uh, a six inch machinist square. You can get them at grizzly.com, for example, for about 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, very nice to have one of these. Uh, sometimes you need to be very accurate on, uh, on measuring things, and this will help a lot. This in combination with your scratch all, you can um, do some very accurate measuring with that. Now, almost as important f f as to which tools I'd like to see you buy, I'm going to take a few seconds to point out some tools that uh, I prefer that you didn't buy. Um, there are a bazillion of really crappy tools out there on the market, and some of them look very sexy and like they're going to solve all your problems. Um, for example, something like this. This is supposed to be a screwdriver, and it has replaceable bits, and it's got a plastic... Uh, 
handle that really looks cool and it ratchets. Um, and it's got all these other replaceable bits in the handle. These are almost nearly worthless. You can't get in and work on anything that's not long enough. And quite frankly, you lose the bits quite often. Another example is one of these multi-bit multi sets. Uh, these are usually pretty awful bits. They're really actually very low quality. Inevitably, this plastic case is going to come apart at some point. You're going to end up with little tiny bits thrown everywhere. Um, this is not a, these are not a suitable replacement for getting a reasonable set of, of real uh, hand tools. So I uh, just wanted to warn you against thinking that you're going to save a bundle by going this route. These just, you'll be unhappy, trust me. All right, so one of the most important things that you're going to need are safety glasses. I can't stress the importance of wearing these. You're going to be cutting metal, you're going to be drilling things. All of these little parts break and fly around. Um, also at the competition, we absolutely positively require everybody that's in the pit area to have safety glasses on. It just makes good sense. I have a lot to say about safety glasses. Um, I also have quite a bit of experience with them and I wanted to share this to you. Safety glasses come in all forms and sizes and most of them the students won't wear. So you need to strike a balance between form and function. Um, let's take a, some of the important aspects of safety glasses are that when you put them on, there's side protection and there's also polycarbonate front protection. Um, this is really important because uh, polycarbonate does not shatter um, and the side protection prevents things from sneaking in from the sides, obviously. The pair I have on right here are the ones that I've been using for several years. I just bought like 30 or 40 pairs of them and the students appear to like wearing these. They're not terribly obtrusive. They don't really get in their way and they don't look like a dork, basically. Some of the uh, failures I've had in the past, let me show you these. Well, these weren't too bad. A lot of the students didn't mind them too much. Again, it's got nice side, glass, side protection and it's got, you can get them in different colors. And so some of the students actually kind of liked these. Um, the ones I could never keep them keep on their heads were these. Um, these are actually over glasses. Um, you, you probably will need to get a couple pairs of these. These fit uh, normal eyeglasses behind them and so if somebody needs corrective lenses um, you'll need a couple of pairs of these. However, the students that don't wear corrective lenses find these glasses to be irritating and, and just too big and quite frankly dorky looking. These goggles are the biggest safety hazard in the history of safety glasses. These are great if you're doing chemistry experiments where you put the glasses on, do your chemistry experiment, then take them off. Among the problems with using these, and I know a lot of schools already have these and are tempted to use them, um, is that once you get them on, um, the way these are constructed, there's an enormous amount of glare from the backside. These also tend to steam up. And so one of two things happens is the students who are uh, running the robot and working on it to generate a great deal of body heat and moisture that, that cause these to fog up, impairing their vision. Um, the other problem is that they, let's face it, don't really look very good, um, and the students tend to take these off very quickly. Um, even in just the short time I'm, I've been talking to you about them, these glasses are already starting to fog up. Um, this is the worst idea ever. You're almost better off not wearing anything. Um, so, ixnay on these completely. I paid about $3.85 a pair for these. Um, these were $2.85. The, the, ex the dollar I saved was not worth it. These, um, I have a box of these that never really got worn. Um, these aren't too bad. I think I paid about $4.50 a pair for these. Um, but I think in the end, after about eight or nine years, it turns out that something like this um, is far more likely to get worn by the students.